Well, hello, my name is Cecilia Rami, and I was a postdoc at the University of New Mexico when I did the study, and now I'm postdoc at the Augsburg University in Germany. And so today we'll talk about the impact of past forest management on future changes in fire regimes and vegetation dynamics in the southern Rocky Mountains in the United States. So we know, we observed that during the last decade, uh, we uh, have a, an increase in temperature, especially here in the southwestern US, and this increase will continue during the future according to the IPCC re uh, reports. We also observed an increase in white fire in the southwestern US. So here you can see an increase uh, in number of fire through time and here uh, an increase in burn area in all vegetation types. So the future fire activity in the southwestern US should increase according to the projection, but that will also depend on the management strategy that we will use. So in the southern US, and especially in uh, New Mexico and Colorado, you have different vegetation types, uh, so here at low elevation, you have the desert, grassland, shrubland. Here you have the juniper, savanna, pinion juniper woodlands. And at higher elevation, you have the ponderosa pine forest. And at the highest elevation, you have the mixed conifer forests. And so in this uh, vegetation type, you have the warming and also more drought events than before. And that led, led to uh, lightening of the fire season and an increase uh, in fuel flammability. And that uh, led to larger area burn and higher fire severity. But we don't really know what will be the future vegetation shift uh, in response to this future climate condition and the future wildfire activity. So that's the the, the question of this study. And so our assumption under projected climate change for these vegetation types are that uh, we will have an increase in high severity fire across the elevation gradient. We will have also a decrease in biomass productivity and tree spaces richness, especially at low elevation, because uh, this vegetation type will be in drier uh, climate condition that at higher elevation. And we should also have an increase in spaces adapted to fire in abundance, especially at high elevation, the mixed conifer forest, because for now these forests are um, more composed by spaces less adapted to fire. And so our study area, uh, is located in the northern part of New Mexico here and the southern part of Colorado. And uh, this study area covered three uh, vegetation types. At low elevation, you have the pinion juniper woodlands. At mid elevation, the ponderosa pine forest. And at high elevation, the mixed conifer forest. And so we used the model LANDIS to simulate the future vegetation dynamics and fire activity. And so the input of this model can be uh, divided into two groups. You have the first group, uh, and it's the, the basic uh, input. So the initial community, and here it's all the parameter concerning the ecological parameter for each species. The ecoregion, so in our case, we use the climate projections, so the RPC, RCP uh, 4.5 and 8.5, and we also put the soil types, so the circle map in our case. And we also had two extensions. The first is the PNET extension, and that allowed us to have like a better parameterization for each species, so um, more precise uh, outputs. So that allows us to have physiological parameter 
for its basis, and also the extension dynamic fuse and fire system uh, that allowed us to simulate the fire severity and fuel types according to the future climate condition. And so we simulate simulated two scenarios. The first one is a scenario under projected climate but without red fire. And the second scenario is under projected climate but with red fire activity. And so we tried to uh, know what will be the impact of white fire on the vegetation dynamics for the ongoing century. And so we got two uh, type of output, an output about fire, so with the area burn and the fire severity for each elevation area, and another one concerning the spaces, so with the biomass, the tree spaces richness, and the spaces abundance for each elevation area too. So firstly, we looked at the um, uh, future wildfire activity. So here you have each elevation, high elevation, mid elevation, low elevation. And here is for the, 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 the ongoing century. Okay. And so in gray, you have the percentage of total area burn. In blue, the percentage of area burn by low to moderate severity fire. And in orange, you have the percentage of area burn by high severity fire. So the first result we seen is that at each elevation we can see an increase in area burned by high severity fire. And so here you have the variance for the entire century for each um, fire severity. And we can see that at high elevation uh, the variance is higher than at the mid elevation and low elevation. So we had more variability per year in our above. So why? And so then we looked at the biomass and the tree species richness to better understand what happened. And so here you have the biomass at each elevation, the current biomass, the biomass uh, under projected climate without fire scenario, and here the biomass uh, under projected climate with fire scenario. And what we see here that we have an increase in biomass, it's due uh, to the CO2 that enhance uh, the biomass productivity. And so the, the largest increase is at high elevation but without fire. And the lowest increase is again at high elevation, but when we had it, wet fire activity. So the projected fire activity decreased the gain in biomass and tree species richness uh, everywhere at all elevation. You can see that here and here, but at high elevation, we've seen. Uh, more increase in biomass with climate and larger decrease in biomass due to fire. And we also see here that the tree species richness increase but less at high elevation than at the lower elevation. So lowest increase in tree species richness. So again, why? And so it's what why we looked at the Spaces abundance. Okay, so here you can see the difference in area occupied by each species. Uh, at the end of the ongoing century, between the climate change only and the climate change and white fire scenario. And all these spaces are sold according to their current abundance. Okay, And so what we see is that at low elevation, you can see like a decrease of the dominant spaces, pinion juniper, but no more uh, than 20 uh, percent of their abundance. So at mid elevation, we can also see a decrease in abies concolor and uh, Douglas fir, and a small increase uh, in Haspen and in Ponderosa pine, but very low increase. But at high elevation, we see a decrease in subalpine fir and Engelmann spruce, and it's more than. 20% uh, of their 
uh, the area occupied by the spaces, and we can also see an increase in Haspen and a small increase in Pondozapai. So, at each elevation, we don't see an increase in spaces adapted to fire uh, as expected. But at high elevation, we can see the largest decrease in spaces not adapted to fire. So, subalpine fir and Engelmann spruce, and the largest increase in Haspen. And so, again, why? And so, at high elevation, to summarize our results, we've seen the largest changes under projected climate change and white fire. And it was not in pinion juniper woodland and ponderosa pine forest as expected. And when we looked at the, all the literature um, concerning the mixed conifer forest, we can see that the, this forest historically uh, had less frequent and less severe fire than uh, currently. And we also know that during the last century, the fire has been actively suppressed in all this forest. And so this both uh, facts led to an increase in fuel load and fuel connectivity, and also an increase in abundance in spaces not adapted to fire, and the spruce and subalpine fuel. And the result, when you had uh, warmer temperature and more uh, drought event is that you will have an increase in fire severity, an increase uh, in mortality of dominant spaces not adapted to fire, so Engelmann spruce and subalpine fir, and these spaces will be replaced by early several spaces like Aspen. And so this forest has been resilient over the past 6,000 years. But in the future, and now maybe, these spaces are treated by ongoing climate changes and fire activity, mainly because of past management strategies, or mainly because they have, the fire has been suppressed. And so now our objective is to found management strategies that could limit the, this biomass and diversity losses, but that will be the next paper. So thank you for watching. Um, here is all the references I used in this presentation. So here and here, if you want to have uh, some article to read. So thanks, and I hope to see you to talk a little bit more about this research. Have a good day. Bye.